Hi, I'm John Kindervog. I'm a senior analyst for Forrester Research, and I cover network security, security information management, and PCI compliance. As a research organization, we realized that things were broken, and we wanted to find out what was truly broken. What, did we need new technologies? What did we need? And as we looked at everything, we realized that the trust model itself was broken, the underlying concepts of information security. So this idea of trust but verify just didn't work. We were doing a lot of trusting of our users, but we weren't verifying anything. And as a result, we had things like the, de uh, the Bradley Manning WikiLeaks bre breach, that kind of thing. So in order to solve those problems, we went back to the beginning and started over and said, what do we need to do? We need to create a new trust model. The simplest way to do that was to create a trust model where we didn't have trust, and that's what we call zero trust. It resonates, it, it makes sense, it's not complicated, and so from there we can do lots of things. We can build architectures, we can, we can uh, talk about how to operationalize it in various types of organizations, but we had to change the trust model first. I've always felt like a hard, crunchy outside and soft, chewy center didn't make much sense to me because it, it allowed us to easily penetrate networks and then steal a lot of stuff and, and not be noticed, right? I mean, if you think about that type of candy that has that hard, crunchy outside, uh, it melts in your mouth, not in your hand, so you can just pop it in and disappear and no one knows you have it. So we, we needed a new model and that model was zero trust. And so as a result, we've defined a new uh, reference architecture we call the zero trust network architecture that takes the concepts of zero trust and actualizes them into a, a way that you can think about uh, networks in a, in a radical manner that will allow you to build security into the DNA of your network itself. In order to make zero trust actionable we needed to make it simple. So there's only five concepts behind zero trust. All resources must be accessed in a secure manner. Access control is on a need-to-know basis and must be strictly enforced. We have to verify and never trust. We're flipping that model inside out. So don't, don't trust people, verify what they're doing and never trust. We need to inspect and log all the traffic going across our networks, not just on the edges, not just on the traditional physical perimeter of the network, but internally, on the wireless sides, uh, remote users, all that traffic must be inspected so we're looking at it as things are happening and logged so that we can review it for future, uh, future problems that, that we may find out about or to, to provide reporting information to give us the data sets that we need. And then finally we need to design our networks from the inside out instead of the outside in. So as I went through things, and my background is really as a routing and switch guy before I became a security person, uh, I realized that when I built networks for people, I was building routers and then putting switches in and not caring about where people put their, their resources. And we didn't know where their data was and we didn't care and we didn't know whether it was secure. Now we need to start at the data and secure the data. So we need to uh, build our roads around the destination, the destination itself being the data. And then we'll get the traffic to where it needs to go, but it'll be done in a secure way. And that's what zero trust network architecture is about. That's designing the network from the inside out instead of the outside in. So as a result, we postulate a future state network where security is at the center of the network, not in the, the edges, not at the periphery. So we are advocating the creation of a new type of security device that we call a segmentation gateway. The segmentation gateway is a firewall, an IPS, a content filtering solution, an encryption solution, all those things together on a high-speed hardware platform, and it becomes the center aggregation point of all traffic. All traffic comes to it first and is distributed out into s separate areas where uh, you can control applications and users more effectively. So in our model, this segmentation gateway uh, enables things like compliance because if you have a PCI compliance objective you need a segmented network. You want to reduce the scope of your of your compliance as much as possible and the only way to do that is through network segmentation. 
in our model, we create these areas we call MCAPs or micro core and perimeters. Think of um, DMZs, but more strategic. So we take an interface of the segmentation gateway and build a separate core uh, switching infrastructure that also has a, its own separate perimeter and policy is based upon traffic moving to and from that micro core and perimeter. So it, there's a global set of policy attributes for all of the elements within that MCAP. So you might have an MCAP for your World Wide Web servers. And the only thing that can flow in and out of them, in and out of that MCAP, is uh, web traffic and, and things that need you need to maybe make the web traffic function like DNS. But you couldn't have um, some other kind of database command or something go in, in and out of that because it would be blocked by the segmentation gateway by, by default because there'll be a policy attribute at the interface that creates this micro perimeter as well. It serves two functions. It gives us a sense of, of parallel switch infrastructures and it gives us separate security zones or micro perimeters as we call them. And then we can aggregate all that through management so it will seem to us like we have this large consolidated switch platform, but in reality what we have is better management tools. So in our parlance, we believe management is the new backplane. And management is so important, it can't be underestimated. You need to have products that are easy to manage, easy to control, that are easy to not screw up. And so much of the problems we have in security are because the devices themselves are hard to manage and it's easy to screw up. We have to flip that model. You can't just say a policy is going to be a source destination port and protocol anymore. It's not enough data points and those data points don't mean anything. We want to know what user X is doing to access resource Y and why they're doing it and do they have a business reason to do it. Those kind of high level things. So if we look at something like WikiLeaks and Bradley Manning, he did not violate any policies when he stole all that data, when he downloaded that. He only violated policy when he sent it to WikiLeaks themselves. But he wasn't controlled as a user because his traffic, maybe it was web traffic, going to a resource and his IP address, that's fine. No one knew who he was or what he was doing or whether he had a business reason to be doing it. If we tie security and the business together uh, more adroitly, then we'll be able to have policies that are simpler, easier to understand, and meet business objectives and compliance objectives. And, and at the same time, all that stuff will reduce uh, our risk and our threats. Well, z the Zero Trust uh, model and Zero Trust network architecture are relatively new concepts. But what we've seen is, is a resonance worldwide that really has caught us off guard. We've seen clients call us up and ask, is this a standard? And if not, how can we make it a standard? We've seen clients reference this architecture in their RFPs. We've seen uh, vendors and, and all kinds of people around the globe say we want to have a community where we can talk about this. And, and quite frankly, we're trying to figure out how to do all those things because that was not where we thought this all was, was hap going to happen. We, we were trying to begin a dialogue about some radical new, new thinking. Uh, so that stuff is all beginning to happen. And now, because it, this makes logical sense to a lot of people, they're starting to say, how can I migrate towards that kind of architecture? So we, we have, we've uh, delineated a way in which you can augment your traditional networks with a zero trust network. So for certain compliance purposes, let's say, it makes sense to build yourself a small zero trust network to augment your traditional network. And then over time you can migrate to it. And as we see more and more uh, companies out there building technologies that will support it, uh, that's gonna help too. So this has got to be a partnership between uh, all the different sides of the security e ecosystem, the people who provide the, the products, the services, and the people whose networks it's going to be deployed at, all of us have to get together because there's a, there's a huge benefit to everybody if we work together uh, and change the trust model, change the way security is done. Maybe we can finally uh, solve a lot of these problems that we've been struggling with for the past 10 or 15 years.
People are starting to realize the impact that Zero Trust Networks can have to them. And intuitively, they've tried to do little bits and pieces of it already. So I get a lot of feedback that says, wow, we tried to do this or we're beginning to do that. And it really fits along that model. And so right now we're in a big network refresh cycle anyway. So I have a lot more people saying I need to come up with some new way, new some future st state of doing it, and they're going to look at it. And I'm not saying, and, and Forrester's not saying that this is the be-all, end-all of the whole idea. We're saying, here, let's start a discussion and get everybody involved in it. But we're, we're seeing people begin to make the steps to make zero trust actionable.